Ever since I started this YouTube channel, I've always been faced with the certain dilemma. Do I film this moment or do I photograph it? This is something I never had to think about prior to having a channel, and I'll be honest, it's probably gotten in the way of me taking some really good photos because, you know, I'd be in the process of filming a moment when I really could have been photographing it. First world problems, yes, but I know I'm not the only one who deals with this same thing. Video has increasingly gone up in demand due to social media, and with that, a lot of photographers are getting into video work. Whether it's for professional client work or working on their own video content for social media, we're pretty much all making videos at some point. And so, as you might think, working in video and photo, it plays a major role in the type of gear that I work with. And it only gets more complicated when I'm trying to decide what I'm bringing with me when I travel. You know, when I went to London last October, I'll admit I brought too much stuff with me yet again. I brought my Sony for video, my XE4 for photos, my X100V. Funny enough, the entire time I was wishing I brought my GR3X with me. I, I don't know what's wrong with me, but clearly I have an issue. Most recently, I was in Morocco, and for this trip, I made a concerned effort to minimize greatly. Now, typically I'd rock my A7 IV, what I'm filming with right now, along with the Sigma 28 to 70 millimeter lens. This is my main video camera setup and it's basically what I use for the past two years. I love the video quality that comes out of this camera. It's also a good photo camera as well, but you know, when you use Fujifilm cameras for so long, it's kind of hard to go from that shooting experience to a Sony. Um, yeah, that is, that's just my experience with Sony's for photography. So this is why I always ended up bringing an XE4 with me and a few other lenses for my street photography. You know, with adding a whole other camera system, all the gear starts to add up and my 60 year old back can only take so much. Whenever I wanted to film something, I'd swap to my Sony. Whenever I wanted to photograph something, I'd swap to my XE4. Just talking about it makes me cringe, um, but I did make it work for two years, what I'd end up doing is actually dedicating entire days to just photography or video. I think this is the best way to approach photography and video. Um, that way you're just so much more focused on one thing instead of you know, being in two different worlds. The reality is though that you can't always do that when you travel um, because you can't guarantee you're going to be in the same place a second time for another day, you know, to, to do photo or to do video. So again, you're faced with the same dilemma. Do I photograph this place or do I film it? More often than not, the answer is yes to both. And then you're just constantly switching between two things all the time. Or in my case, switching between two cameras. It's been a big hassle for me. And it's one of the main reasons I switched to an X-T5. Now let me make this clear, most of you don't need this camera. The X-E4 that I used prior to getting an X-T5 was well capable of creating great photos. But I needed something that could also be my video camera at the same time and the X-E4 um, quite, quite doesn't do it uh, well, the whole video thing. I know. I'm in a very small niche of consumer that needs a shooting experience that is really good for photography. But I need that camera to also be really good at video. And that's what the X-T5 provides. If you look at this camera's design, it screams photo camera. There's no flip out screen. There's no record button. There's dials for your shutter speed and your ISO, like your traditional photography camera. It's the shooting experience of Fujifilm that we all know and love. But internally, this is a beast for video as well.
Now I've used an XC4 for video before and the XC5's improvement in terms of image quality and just the overall video um, capabilities, it's well improved. And it puts this camera a lot closer to the image quality I was getting out of my Sony. Which is why I'm confident enough to leave the Sony behind when I travel and just bring my X-T5 with me. As good as it might sound to, you know, travel with just one camera, um, that terrifies me as well because anything can happen when you're traveling. You know, the second my camera breaks or it gets lost or someone mugs me, I'm without a camera <laughs> and I don't know what I would do without a camera. So actually having a second camera with you is actually a smart thing to do. But at the same time, I don't want to drastically increase what I'm bringing with me and undo all of this simplification to my kit that I just did. So that's where the GR3X comes in. With such a low profile camera, pairing the GR with the X-T5 is a perfect setup for me. It gives me the insurance of having another camera without all of that additional weight. And rather than having a second X-T5 body, the GR actually provides a bit more versatility in my kit as it offers, you know, a much more discreet option. When I was in Morocco, I found myself actually using my GR3X a lot because it was so discreet. And you know, it also helps that it looks like your typical tourist camera. Um, so, you know, more often than not, when people do notice me on the street, I just look like a clueless tourist and that's a lot more helpful than you'd think. Now, while I was in Morocco, I was able to fit all of this. I mean, it's not much, I know. Um, I was able to fit it all in this 3.5 liter version of the Wotencraft Travel Pilot. This bag was a joy to use on my trip. It actually kept all of my gear completely dry during a downpour, so there's that. Wotencraft also just released their new version of their sling bag. I haven't got around testing it as much yet, but it also fits my whole kit, so I might end up bringing this along with me to Paris. If you're wondering about these camera straps, Wotencraft makes them as well. I'll have all of this stuff linked in the description. So to recap everything, the Fujifilm X-T5 with the Sigma 18-50 in 35mm as my two lenses for the X-T5 and the Ricoh GR3X. This pairing worked really well for me when I was in Morocco, and I think it's going to be what I use going forward for the foreseeable future. I, I really don't see any reason of changing it right now because it's so simplified and it gives me everything that I really need for both photography and my videos. As for the camera I'm filming this video with right now, the Sony, I'm gonna keep it, but it's gonna be left behind uh, whenever I travel because this is just a lot more condensed of a kit, um, but that Sony is such a great camera that, you know, whenever I am home, I'm gonna still gravitate to using this camera for my video footage, but when I travel, it's gonna be the X-T5 from here on out. So that's a lot of gear talk. Um, this is where I'm at right now. Why does anyone care? That I don't know. But maybe this helps some of you um, in the same kind of situation that I was in. Now I got a ton of photos from Morocco that I still have to edit. Um, I also have to update my website uh, with those photos. Luckily, it's all really easy to do with Squarespace. What a segue. Once you have all of your images you want to put on your website, it really comes down to just uploading your images to Squarespace and presenting it in the way that you like. Squarespace makes it super easy because there's a bunch of templates you can start with or you could just build it from scratch. If I can make a website, um, pretty much anyone can. So, you know, if there's a project you've been working on and you want to showcase that project, you want to start a blog, a newsletter, maybe even an online store, all of that can be done with Squarespace. I've been using them probably for six years now and I can't recommend them enough. So if you're interested, there is a free trial and you can check them out for free. You can visit squarespace.com slash Faisal. 
And if you're ready to make a purchase, you can get a 10% off discount by using the code Faisal. So definitely give it a try. Um, thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. And thank you all for making this far in this gear talk video. Um, gear's gear. You know, as much as it might seem unimportant in photography, it's still something that I personally am really fascinated by because I like things. I like cameras. Um, I like cameras. And I think you like cameras too because you watch this. So see ya.